come once again let me continue with consolidation settlement and uh, i have just, just i have discussed in the previous lecture about normally consolidation over consolidation and what they are and how to if it is over consolidation soil then how to find out the over consolidation pressure and now uh, we have discussed one method of calculating consolidation settlement uh, now we are uh, uh, we have discussed about the e log p curve and slope that means compression index uh, but by using that how to find out the consolidation settlement let me uh, discuss that part and that is more useful uh, uh, we frequently use that uh, so uh, you, you know that we have um, uh, soil mechanics you might have learned that uh, when there is a uh, layer suppose uh, something like this initially and this is solid and this is void and then because of the consolidation. So, it happens like this and uh, this become void and this is solid, solid will remain unchanged. So, this is actually your delta H. So, delta H and this is H, this is one dimensional consolidation if you consider. So, delta H by H 1 uh, that means, delta H by original thickness which will be nothing but delta E by 1 plus E. This is soil mechanics you might have learned, I will not go in detail derivation of this. So, E 1 minus E 2 is nothing but delta E, uh, suppose initial pressure was P 1 and final pressure is P 2. Uh, under this P 1 um, uh, it was E 1 and under this pressure is E 2, then under these two uh, the pressure change your void ratio change from E 1 to E 2. So, E 1 minus E 2 is the delta E and, uh, and if you say from definition this original volume is nothing but 1 plus E 1 or original uh, initial void ratio. So, delta E by 1 plus E is nothing but the change in volume by original volume and change in thickness by original thickness they are equal the soil mechanics you might have learned. So, that means, I can utilize this equation and if I use this equation I can see now delta H is nothing but delta E by 1 plus E 1 multiplied by H 1. Okay. So, if I take from here delta H will be equal to H 1 multiplied by this quantity. So, that is the thing is done and now delta E delta E is what actually already we have shown that delta E is uh, previously we have done delta E is nothing but C C into log 10 base P 2 by P 1 and P 2 is nothing but P 1 plus delta P, P 2 is nothing but P 1 plus delta P. Okay. So, because of that you can see I have substituted delta E by C C multiplied by this quantity. So, that means your equation become now C C multiplied by thickness compression index of the soil multiplied by thickness of the layer divided by 1 plus E 1 and multiplied by log P 2 by P 1 and P 2 is nothing but P 1 plus change in pressure divided by P 1. So, this is the uh, equation that is uh, very well known formula the log formula called that consolidation to find out the total consolidation settlement by using log formula. And you can see that uh, as I have explained how to find out C C and uh, C C actually uh, is nothing but here actually this one. So, uh, just inversing this one I can find out C C equal to del E divided by log P 2 by P 1. That means, if I have the E versus pressure data then if I plot in a semi log for a particular normally consolidated soil, then I can uh, get the uh, this is not del T this is C C sorry C C I can get the C C like this and that is that is one unknown to find out settlement H 1 will be thickness of the layer total consolidation layer thickness will be known and initial void ratio also will be known can be determined and uh, P 1 P 1 is what nothing but initial water burden pressure that means, uh, if there is a uh, soil layer something like this 
suppose this is the ground surface and soil layer is like this. So, I if I want if there is a consolidating layer here, then present wall button pressure at this point I have to find out how to find out this one. I will find out weight of the soil above this. So, that is your nothing but over one present over one. So, gamma 1 h 1 plus gamma 2 h 2 and when there is water table then you have to use effective unit weight obviously. So, by this way we can find out p 1 that means, if soil unit weight and uh, all uh, profile soil profile is given then I can find out what is the present over one pressure in the middle of the clay layer and delta p that is only unknown now delta p. So, delta p is actually I will discuss separately. So, that means, suppose delta p is known suppose then I can find out this and if uh, by using c c from here, but uh, many a times that calculation of c c from uh, the e log p curve actually uh, it is good to use, but there are also uh, several other uh, alternative and people over the time uh, given uh, many uh, empirical equation and one such equation given by Terzaghi. Uh, if you know the liquid limit of the soil, then you can approximately find out C c by using this equation. That means, C c is nothing but 0 0.009 liquid limit minus 10 and liquid limit suppose if it is 40, then 40 minus 10 then it become 30. 30 multiplied by 0 0.009 that means 0.27. Okay. So, that means, if you know the liquid limit of the soil, then you can also find out approximately the compression index by using this empirical equation. There are so many also in the literature for different types of soil, different C C formula also available one can use it, but the for the time being in our course, if E versus uh, uh, pressure data is not available and if you have the liquid limit, then uh, we can use by using uh, we can use uh, this equation to find out the C C for calculation of consolidation settlement by using this. So, the ultimately your consolidation settlement equation is this one. What is this? C C into H by 1 plus E log 10 base P 1 plus del P by P 1. So, this is the important one one has to remember. Next one actually you can see the next part I have told that your equation was like this your uh, equation was delta was C c multiplied by h 1 divided by 1 plus e 1 log 10 base p 1 plus delta p divided by p 1. So, uh, p 1 how to find out if there is a uh, uh, this is the ground surface and clay layer is somewhere here and suppose water table is here itself, then what I can find out this is gamma 1, this is gamma 2 and present wall button pressure how to find out suppose this is H 1 and this is suppose H 2. So, it will be gamma 1 minus gamma w multiplied by H 1 plus gamma 2 minus gamma w multiplied by H 2 that gives you P 1. That means, at the middle of the clay layer what is the present overburden pressure because of the shell point of the soil. So, that is your P 1 and, uh, and that means, P 1 is known, but if the soil data or unit weight etcetera is given then what is the del P? The del P has to be estimated. So, del P is the increase of pressure at the middle of the clay layer due to the load applied through the footing. That means, what actually this one? Uh, let me uh, so, suppose this is the this is the uh, uh, footing and suppose the clay layer is somewhere here, then uh, because of this suppose this q load is applied here, if it is q and if the footing is b by b, then at this point what is the pressure? At this point q will be equal to q divided by b square. I know the below the footing what is the pressure, but I do not know what is the pressure here and we have discussed or you know also in through soil mechanics that uh, the when if you have apply load at a particular point uh, when you go deeper and deeper the pressure will be decreasing okay? and there is Bosinex formula is there some other uh, method also there 
will discuss one by one. That means, what actually if you go deeper and deeper uh, then whatever pressure was here that pressure intensity at this level will be reduced that has to be obtained. So, how to find out that pure analytical method is there by uh, integrating Boseness uh, uh, formula that if you have a, uh, a rectangular footing like this a b c d and if you want to find out suppose at any point at any corner. So, suppose at corner d if you want to find out. So, this is integrated like this only and so at this corner if you want to find out this is the expression for pressure suppose uh, 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 suppose uh, uh, the footing is here and this is the below the corner. So, at any point suppose I want to find out this is suppose z at any z below but vertically below the corner uh, if you want to find out the pressure then so, footing may be uh, something like this. So, this is the expression analytical expression and you can see uh, this expression contains only m and n and what is m and what is n? m actually a by z if I say this is a and if I say this is b then m equal to a by z and n equal to b by z and z is what at that means if, if this is the footing. Uh, located and from the footing base to the point where you will calculate settlement. So, this becomes z. So, the putting footing base to the middle of the clay layer that distance becomes the z. So, if you know the z and if you know the dimension of the footing then you can find out m and n and then by using this formula I can find out what is the pressure at this point. Now, uh, uh, also we have discussed and we have shown before uh, particularly by using uh, while calculating settlement also that if there is a, uh, a rectangular footing and then the pressure variation uh, at the along the center particularly for flexible footing along the center of the footing actually pressure will be maximum and corner will be comparatively less. Okay. So, that means if I find out the corner of the footing that means we will be apply using lesser value of pressure. So, what you have to do then you have to find out at the middle of the footing. So, if you how to by but you can utilize this equation and find out the set pressure increase at the middle of the clay layer. How to do that? Let me uh, draw a phrase uh, if I if I have a footing something like this then I can divide easily. Uh, by four parts. Now, I will apply through this equation I will find out for this at this corner that means and again I will apply this equation for this footing on this corner, again I will apply this equation for this footing at this corner, I will apply this equation for this footing and at this corner. So, that means I need not do four times since it is similar. So, what I will do? I will find out pressure increase by this equation once and simply I will multiply by 4 that gives you uh, pressure along the center line of the footing. Uh, okay. So, uh, so along the center line of the footing. So, that means, so if there is a footing, so while applying this equation what I have to do then if the length is suppose 6 meter and width become 3 meter then what I have to take A I have to take 6 by 2 that means 3 and B I have to take 3 by 2 that means 1.5 meter. So, based on that now is our z equal to 5 meter. So, z equal to 5 meter. So, now our A by z become 3 by 5 and that is nothing but m and n become B by z that is actually 1.5 by 5. So, so, this m and n if you apply in this equation we will get a value and then whatever value I will get multiply by 4 that will give you the pressure increase because of this rectangular loaded footing along the center line of the footing. So, that is our expected uh, that, that we need to find out. So, this is the way if you want to find out uh, literally is actually lengthy calculation 
and the expression was also uh, expression is also quite lengthy and generally in practical work we generally do not do by this method. Uh, of course, if you use computer program and all simply this expression can be programmed and uh, this can be done in no time, but when you do hand calculation hardly we use made this method there are other simplified method which can be utilized. So, what, what other methods are there actually we can see that if there is a footing like this uh, as uh, L length and width B, then we know that uh, when we we'll go deeper and deeper the pressure will be decreasing. That means, I can imagine that this footing width or length is increasing. So, length wise also increasing and width wise also increasing that means, if you go deeper and deeper the area of the footing is increasing. So, if you can find out the area of footing different different depth load divided by area you can get directly the pressure. So, to find out that how much it is increasing footing size generally this dispersion we take two vertical one horizontal that means, if I go uh, that if I go two vertical one horizontal that means, if this become z uh, this become z vertical z then horizontally it how much it will go it will go z by 2 horizontally will go z by 2. So, if this height is z then a horizontal movement this portion will be z by 2 similarly this side also z by 2 then entire width will become your L plus z. Similarly, width also in the other direction it will also uh, 2 vertical 1 horizontal it will be if that way dispar then what will happen both side will be z by 2 z by 2 ultimately this width also become new width will become b plus z. If I know this and if I know the loading of the q loading, so q divided by b plus z multiplied by l plus z by this way I can find out what is the pressure at this point. And this pressure actually very much approximate, uh, but uh, many times if it is a little deeper uh, 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 soil then we will find out that by using that whatever expression we have shown by that way whatever value we get and by this way also value will be by and large similar. So, uh, so that means, one can use this but frequently uh, hand calculation when you do then automatically uh, uh, it is our tendency to uh, quickly assume a dispersion sometimes the soil is uh, uh, this soil is deeper as uh, sorry stiffer little better soil this dispersion can be little bit we can change uh, uh, different values also, but most commonly used dispersion is 2 vertical 1 horizontal, but this can be according to you know, the soil type this can be different values can be taken, but generally we take 2 vertical 1 horizontal. And if you take 2 versus uh, 2 vertical 1 horizontal then at a depth z from the footing base uh, what will be the width and what is the length of the footing width will be b plus z length will be l plus z that I will show in the next figure you can see. So, this is the figure suppose uh, both length and uh, width is shown here. Okay, sorry, here there is an error I will just correct it uh, you, and you can see when it is a footing f z is applied this, this uh, uh, equation since it is taken length is taken as 2 l f and width is taken as 2 b f. So, this equation will be corrected as f z divided by 2 b f uh, 2 b f multiplied by oh sorry this is totally wrong this is 2 b f multiplied by 2 l f or it is nothing but f z divided by 4 b f l f this is the way. So, that means that is nothing but actually q pressure at the uh, below the footing and uh, you have to find out pressure at some depth z suppose this is the depth z and you can see at depth z as I have shown in the previous slide your length become 2 l f plus z and and uh, width will become 2 b f plus z. So, f, so your del p will become f z divided by 2 b f plus z multiplied by 2 l f plus z. So, by that actually by using this equation one can find out quickly the value of delta p. So, now 
if your if your equation is uh, delta will be equal to C C into H 1 divided by 1 plus E 1 log 10 base uh, and log 10 base uh, P 1 uh, P 2 by P 1 or it, this is P 1 plus delta P. So, P 1 calculation I have shown del P calculation I just shown like this and C C to be either used from the uh, slope of the compression curve uh, E log P curve or from the empirical equation like C C equal to 0 0.009 liquid limit minus 10 by this way can be obtained and E 1 initial void ratio can be obtained from the uh, uh, initial uh, measurement. So, you once you get this then we can find out what is the total consolidation settlement. So, now uh, uh, one problem a normally uh, a soft normally consolidated clay layer is 10 meter thick and with a natural moisture content of 45 percent the clay that means natural moisture content is given uh, why it is given I will show you uh, how it is uh, actually the initial instead of giving uh, your uh, natural initial void ratio and we know that uh, your uh, S multiplied by E equal to water content multiplied by G and since it is saturated soil. So, this become 1. So, E become natural water content multiplied by G. So, that that way actually you will get the E value. The normally considered clay layer is 10 meter thick with a natural moisture content of 45 percent. The clay has saturated unit weight of 17 kilo Newton per meter cube a particle specific gravity of 22.7 and a liquid limit of 65 percent. A foundation will subject the middle of the clay layer to a vertical stress increase of 15 kilo Newton per meter square. Determine the approximate value of the consolidation settlement of the foundation if the ground water table is at the ground level. That means, your footing was something like this and it is suppose resting on this and this is suppose 10 meter and uh, uh, 10 meter and unit weight is given 17 the saturated unit weight and loading is uh, uh, your pressure in key loading is instead of pressure instead of loading here directly it is given that the middle of the clay layer what is the pressure what is the pressure actually it is given 15 kilo Newton per meter square. So, that means del P is given 15 kilo Newton per meter square. Uh, so, this is the problem all details are there and you can see the approximate value of the consolidation and C C is not given since liquid limit is there. So, you can find out uh, C C also and what else required C C and thickness is 10 meter is given and initial void ratio I can find out from here. So, like that everything is given. So, I can find out the consolidation settlement. Let me go to the next slide it is uh, shown here you can see that one second I will draw the problem. And suppose clay layer is 10 meter and delta P equal to 15 kilo Newton per meter square you can see that initial vertical stress at the middle of the clay layer. So, that means, I have this is nothing but P 1. So, 17 minus 9.81 17 minus since it is saturated ground water table is here. So, I have to find out 17 minus 9.81 at the middle of the clay layer I have to find out water burden pressure. So, it is 10 divided by 2. So, if I do this, this value comes 35.95 and final effective vertical stress will be uh, this will be P 1 plus del P. So, since del P is already given no calculation is required. So, 35.95 plus 15 become the del P. So, it become 50.95 kilo Newton per meter square and initial void ratio as I have told you that E 1 is nothing but W into G this is 45 percent and 2.7 is the, uh, the specific gravity. So, it become 1.215. So, your delta H become uh, and C C become you can see 
point zero zero nine sixty five minus ten. This is liquid limit. Sixty five is the liquid limit minus ten, so it comes point four nine five. So this is actually CC and this is actually H. This is actually E one. This is actually P one. This is actually del P and this is also P one. So if you put all those values, then if you calculate, it comes that point three three eight meter. So approximately. Uh, sorry, it will not. Uh, it will be. Uh, uh, it will be three thirty-eight millimeters. So, if you convert into millimeter, three thirty-eight millimeter. So, it is nothing but actually uh, three. I uh, can say approximately thirty-four centimeter also. So, this is the way. Actually, one application I'll just uh, show you. Showed you. Next thing is. As I have told you that the soil can be, it, this is actually whatever calculation we have done, this is based on normally consolidated soil. But if the soil is uh, over consolidated, then your uh, 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 as I have explained that uh, when there is a soil is over consolidated, generally we use a model. Model means what? Uh, I, I find out suppose pre consolidation pressure here this portion curve this is also curved. So, I put which we generally take from up to pre consolidation from one straight line and from here to here another another straight line though it is actually curved, but up to this will uh, P this is P C pre consolidation pressure beyond that one curve and this is the another curve. Now, suppose your P naught is somewhere here or P 1 was somewhere here or P naught suppose not dash is here and you have applied del P in such a way that it did not cross the uh, uh, this uh, P C that means, suppose your del P is somewhere this much. If it is so, then it has P naught plus del P, P naught plus del P is less than P C. So, P naught plus del P that means, it did not cross the over consolidation pressure that means, you are recompress this portion is nothing but recompression pre consolidation pressure means what before that whatever you are getting that is once it was consolidated now it is decompression. So, this slope actually is C r and this slope is C c. So, now this portion consolidation I will consider like a consolidation settlement, but with a C r value you can see C r multiplied by h divided by 1 plus 2 log 10 base p naught plus del p by p naught this is nothing but our normal log formula I have used with what I have done, I have changed only instead of C C because it is compression taking place in this zone, recompression zone, I have used only C R. So, different soil will have different C R values actually, if it is related to C C also sometime one fifth, one fourth. So, that value can be taken and uh, otherwise C R can be obtained from the laboratory and then P naught can be obtained from the uh, calculated and del P also can be calculated and based on that one can find out the con consolidation of the over consolidated soil when your P plus del P is less than P C that is the formula. If it happens uh, uh, otherwise that is if your P dot plus del P so as I have shown the model let me draw once again let me draw the one draw once again the model is something like this this is suppose P C and this is suppose P naught and your del P suppose applied in such a way that it is going here. This is suppose del P. If this is del P, then you can see P P naught plus del P is crossing the del P C that means, it is crossing this one and the settlement will be linear from here again linear from here. So, because of that what I can do instead of using formula once I can use formula twice actually. I will consider P naught to P C once calculation and P C to this one P C to P 2 P C to P 2. So, for that actually you can see if when I will calculate from here to here that means, C R will be used I have used C R and H 1 plus E naught log and you can see P naught already there plus del P is how much here I, do, I it is not del P. So, it is P C minus P naught. What is del P here actually P C minus P naught 
P C minus P naught this is nothing but del P for this equation when I will calculate this portion when I will calculate this portion del P is nothing but P C minus P naught and divided by P naught. So, that means I have considered consolidation for this zone now I will calculate for calculation for this to this portion and here when the consolidation taking place in this zone I will be using C C and again same thickness 1 plus E will be there log 10. Now, I will calculate from P C and you can see P naught plus del P I am once you P naught plus del P that means I am reaching here and already I have taken effect of P C. So, P naught plus del P minus P C. So, that become this 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 one will be nothing but from here to here it will be nothing but P naught plus del P P naught plus del P minus P C pre consolidation pressure. So, so that is so that is that become del P and this become initial pressure. So, initial pressure this become del P in the formula P naught plus del P by P naught. Now, if you simplify this one little bit you can see this equation this P naught P naught get cancelled. So, P C by P naught plus and C R and here actually C C 1 plus E log P naught plus del P by P P C. And so, when this is a over consolidated soil and P naught plus del P is summation is greater than the P C then this is the formula in two components will be the one will be C R component one will be C C component. So, by this actually one has to calculate the total consolidation settlement when it is over consolidated soil. So, now uh, I think I will stop here with this thank you I will take some more application maybe in the subsequent slide.